loss revelation. That is the way that energy is made. And mitochondria are very interesting. You could talk about them for days, actually. They are self-replicating, for example. They will divide and produce other mitochondria. They contain about 37 genes. They actually contain some of their own genetic material. Most of the genetic material from mitochondria is actually contained in the nuclear DNA, as normal, but they contain some of their own genes. And of course, the other fascinating thing about mitochondria is all of your mitochondria came from your mother, and all of hers came from her mother, and so on back through the maternal line, right, right the way back to a lady that geneticists call mitochondrial Eve. Anyway, let's think about the mitochondria uh, a little bit, getting back on track. So here we have a normal cell, as we know we have the nucleus, and the mitochondria are the sausage shaped organelles, they're not this big of course relatively, and they have a very highly enfolded inner membrane. So they're sausage shaped organelles with an outer membrane and a highly enfolded inner membrane. And the inner membrane contains the enzymes that are needed for the production of energy to produce the energy. And as we said, there is a hundred to a couple of thousand of these in active, metabolically active cells. Now let's just look at one example of what's going on. One example of what's going on here is that glucose is used. Glucose is used as a metabolic substrate, it is used as a fuel. And that's combined with oxygen. And that gives us energy, and it also gives us water, and it also gives us carbon dioxide. So the reason that people breathe out more carbon dioxide than they breathe in is because the mitochondria are generating carbon dioxide. And if you're interested in the chemistry, glucose is uh, C6H12O6. That's combined with six molecules of oxygen. That's an important point. Oxygen is always O2. There are two oxygen atoms in a molecule of oxygen. So that is a molecule of glucose, six molecules of oxygen. That combines to give the energy, and that also gives us six molecules of water, and six molecules of carbon dioxide. So this is going on inside the mitochondria. Glucose plus oxygen gives energy plus water plus carbon dioxide. The powerhouse of the cell. This is the site of respiration, cellular respiration. This is the process that's going on. Respiration means the utilisation of oxygen to produce vital energy. This energy is essential for all physiological processes. So we've seen that cells require energy for all of their physiological processes. And this means that if a cell is deprived of oxygen, eventually the physiological processes will stop. But after that, if the hypoxia is prolonged, the cell will actually start to die. And this has never been put better than the great British physiologist who in 1912 wrote, Oxygen lack not only stops the machine, but wrecks the machinery. So the oxygen lack will stop the cell from working, it will stop the machine, and eventually the same hypoxia that has stopped the cell from working will go on and kill the cell. And Haldane actually wrote this about the brain, he was talking about the brain, and it's true that the brain is affected first by hypoxia, 
But it's true of any tissue. And when a tissue becomes hypoxic, it will stop working because it's not producing any energy. Then after a period of time, it will die. Now, normally, when a cell is using energy, when a cell is using oxygen in the production of energy, that is called aerobic, with the presence of oxygen. So energy production in the presence of oxygen is aerobic energy production, aerobic metabolism. But if a cell is deprived of oxygen, it can still go on producing energy, at least for a short period of time, in the absence of oxygen. It can only do this for a little while, but it can do it for a period of time. And the production of energy in the absence of oxygen is called anaerobic respiration, and without. Energy is produced without oxygen, which it can do for a period of time. But the trouble with this is that lactic acid is produced. And when lactic acid is produced, the pH of the cell decreases. In other words, the cell becomes more acidic because of the accumulation of lactic acid. And this has many effects. For example, the chromatin, the nuclear material in the cell, will start actually clumping together. So there can be damage to the very DNA of the cell. And it also particularly affects the membranes, the cell membrane around about the outside. <clears throat> and it also affects the membranes around cell organelles. It affects the membranes around about mitochondria. It affects the membranes around about lysosomes. So what happens is, if the energy is no longer being produced, the cell membrane on the outside is affected. That means that energy can no longer be used to pump sodium out of the cell. So sodium accumulates in the cell. Potassium will passively diffuse out of the cell. So you'll get too much potassium outside the cell and too much sodium inside the cell. And the sodium, of course, is osmotic. It attracts water and the cell will start blowing up. <clears throat> so the endoplasmic reticulum, the lysosomes, the mitochondria will start swelling up with water. Now, if the oxygen supply is restored, these swelling effects are reversible and the cell can make a full recovery. But if this process goes on for too long a period of time, then it becomes irreversible. The mitochondria can swell so much that they cannot resume the process of making energy and the process is irreversible. And then eventually, as the lysosomes swell, remember the lysosomes contain digestive enzymes, lysozyme, for example, and other enzymes. When the lysosomes burst, these nasty digestive enzymes will be released into the cell, and the cell will basically auto-digest. So very important. Initially, the cells will swell up when they're hypoxic, and at that stage, it's reversible. If you can get some oxygen into your patient at that stage, you will save the viability of their tissues. The damage will not occur if you can restore the oxygen supply. If not, and the hypoxia is prolonged, the damage to the cells will become irreversible and there will be cell death and that cell, that group of cells, that tissue will die. So remember, oxygen lack not only stops the machine from working, eventually it wrecks the machinery. It will cause tissue necrosis. Let's just look at this briefly on the notes. Let's think about how long it takes for oxygen lack to damage different tissues of the body. Now, the brain is the most 
sensitive organ to 